Patrick CC. We're talking about the tragic downfall of a wildlife influencer who apparently ruined his life in seconds. I have no idea who this is. Um, I don't think he doesn't look familiar to me. But this seems interesting because like, what do you do, bro? Kill a lion or something? I, I don't know. see bro it's rare that we see influencers who are universally loved and praised for their positive impact on the world ironically these creators are the most vulnerable because even the smallest controversy can fundamentally destroy their reputations this couldn't be more true for brother nature who earned millions of nature? followers on all of his social media wasn't he blonde at one point? Zach, I feel like I couldn't recognize him without the blonde hair. Yeah, platforms from his wildlife content. Wasn't Brother blonde, Nature man. was known for being kind-hearted, philanthropic, and loving towards animals. But he made one tiny mistake at a sandwich shop in 2019 that would do irreversible damage to his reputation. Oh my goodness. Yo! Okay, so I did know about this because I saw a post from Brother Nature, I think, talking about something that had nothing to do with this at all. And I swear, bro, Twitter is so funny. Someone literally quotes me and was like, hey, bro, I remember you got beat up, bro. We ain't forget. And literally, like, bro, that's crazy. Nation and that's career. crazy, bro. Even five years after this incident, people are See, still commenting bro, bro, on this is his exactly what I'm talking about, bro. We ain't forget. We ain't forget is crazy. Instagram reminding him that they did not forget what he did. Today we are going to analyze the Yikes. downfall of Brother Nature, who Let's could not see, figure bro. out how to handle his biggest controversy and determine if he was a victim or if this incident just pulled the wool from our eyes and exposed who he truly is. Mm. And even though Brother Nature was known for being kind and wholesome, yeah. his social media career began out of jealousy and envy. One summer what? day in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Kelvin Pena was with his cousin playing video games. After coming out victorious, Kelvin went outside and was met face to face with a deer. Intrigued by the large animal standing in his cousin's backyard, he called him over. His cousin nonchalantly explained that the deer had been coming over regularly and becoming mm. somewhat of a family pet. Kelvin and his cousin nice. then interacted with the deer, feeding it while documenting the experience on Snapchat. Instead of being impressed by his cousin's ability to interact with wildlife, he felt envious and jealous. He wished to be as docile as his cousin. In a Yo. crazy set of circumstances, Kelvin found a deer in his backyard the moment he returned home from his cousin's house. It's Envious crazy. of his cousin's pet deer, Kelvin wanted one for himself. He enticed the deer with whatever food he could find. And when bro the two locked eyes... Bro literally built a career off a crazy ego, bro. Here he we go. best friends. Excited to showcase his new so found friend on social deer. media, Kelvin needed to give the deer a name. And he chose the name Money. Mm. I'm out eating crackers for my pet deer. His name Money. This name, combined with the reason why Kelvin became interested in wildlife, potentially foreshadows the future downfall of his career. Yeah, posted the video of him meeting money to Instagram, instantly catching people's attention. Seeing the positive reception, he decided to upload the video to Twitter. Within 24 hours, the video had thousands of likes and retweets. People thought it was hilarious and could not stop sharing it across the internet. It was a surreal experience for Kelv, who at the time could not Zane. comprehend why this random video of him interacting with this deer was intriguing to so many people. Do, uh... At age 17, his social media profile skyrocketed, and he continued posting videos of him interacting with various deer in his neighborhood. Keep in mind, his name was not Brother Nature at the beginning. It was mm, Cold Game Kelv. But his mm. whole world changed when he introduced everyone to his newest deer family member, Canela. Uh-huh. Y'all know what the heck going on, man. Got my dope Canela out here. We got the organic cut carrots, the banana on deck. Canela was good, girl. No, I got you. Canela, don't eat the banana like that. Canela, let me peel it for you. <laughs> Canela became an iconic Bruh. part of internet culture, to the point where a lot of you probably refer to any deer as Canela. Canela I feel like became I have a seen at least one video staple where part I of his lie. brand. Still, five years later, people love and miss Canela. Kelv unified all the deer in his neighborhood, calling them the Deer Squad. The Deer Squad featured Money, Money Jr., Canela, Lil Bambi, Tequila, and Lola. And anytime he would meet another animal, he would give them a name and add them 
them to the family. Since the United Crazy. States is actually overpopulated with deer and they all look very similar, mm -hmm. the odds of seeing the same deer twice seems pretty low. So people were Crazy. shocked that he had such a deep and personal connection with a select few deer. In the beginning, his attitude and demeanor was totally different than what he evolved to. Instead of being fun-loving and free-spirited, he had a cocky and braggadocious attitude. Just let me know that we don't play games out here, my nigga. It's another one walking up right to me. You my nigga, bro. What's up? You hungry, my nigga? Some Pringles, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. We do this deer shit out here, bro. Yeah. It's that good shit. It's that good shit, money. Eat that up. Damn, bro. <laughs> them antlers looking clean. You just got them hoes cut today? Yeah. Sound fresh. Here you go. Eat that. Yeah, money. Is that real 2014 What's YouTube up? vibe, bro? Gang shit around here, money. His attitude, flexing his dear friends like they were foreign cars, made him seem like the funny kid everyone knew in school. He even dabbled in making music. Have you heard of who I am? Oh man. Around my town. This was a dark time, bro. They call me the man. Although he possessed seemingly zero music talent, the shtick of yeah. using animals for music video content has actually worked for a few rappers after him. Rapper the Mexican OT went viral last year for holding a chicken while rapping and his buddy riding a horse behind him. Mm. He also had Blake he Fades who too. constantly went viral for rapping on a farm with some cow friends behind him. Blarity. It's these types of subtle content here, strategies that people don't focus I mean, on that be. can really take know. an artist's career to the next level. I cover these types of music marketing strategies as well as give you my personal creation of content ideas in my weekly newsletter tuned in tons of artists out there want to learn how to w get ad, bro. as Kel's likes and views exponentially increased he realized he could turn these silly videos into Pretty a tough, business man. venture while feeding the deer kelvin repeated the phrase everybody eats which eventually became mm. his slogan everybody eats man fast money you already know what's up you heard <laughs> Kelv's good friend and rapper Slater convinced him to start making merchandise as a source of revenue, while Slater's manager, Dick. Nikki, came up with the idea of starting a non-profit organization, Everybody Eats Foundation, and mm. used Kelv's upbringing in a single-parent household as the inspiration. Last Thanksgiving, I came up with, I was like, so what can I do to help my community? So I went to uh, the food pantry with, with a piece of paper, and I asked the people as they, as they were getting their food, like, hey, would you be able to afford a Thanksgiving meal this this Thanksgiving, and the people that said no, I took their name down, wrote their address, and then I made a little promo video telling people, like, hey, you can go to my website, donate some money so we can feed these families during Thanksgiving. People were convinced we made the right person famous. Some Bro. people go viral for that the wrong fire. reasons, but it this is. dude has my respect. This dude has a good head on his shoulders, and he has a good heart. Dude is a blessing on this planet. Kelv was an internet sensation that you could not hate, and this brought him big opportunities. Yeah. He partnered with the production company called Public Cinema Club to premiere a short-form documentary called Deer Squad at the 2017 Sundance That's Film Festival. That's crazy. Then a production company called Super Deluxe was impressed with the reception of the documentary and threw him on a plane to Los Angeles to film more content where he interacted with other exotic animals. Mm. Kelvin the Deer Whisperer learns life lessons from wild animals gained millions of views on Facebook. In the comments, a random user referred to Kelv as Brother Nature and the name stuck. <laughs> In September of 2017, Yo. he chose to drop out of school and move to Los Angeles to become Brother Nature full time. However, That's this fire. was seemingly a bad decision for him. Yeah, his never videos, mind. Brother Nature really seemed to bond with the local deer. He talked about how much he loved animals and cared about their well-being, even referring to the deer as his friends. But when the moment came for him to profit from his success, he left them behind. In LA, Kelvin steered away from what it's made true. him famous. He completely abandoned the deer-related content since he was no longer living in Pennsylvania. He yes. purchased a baby goat, which became the main focus of his videos. Hey man, I got a very special announcement, man. I just bought myself my first pet Go for goat. Pull the Bambi. We lit. His name <laughs> Bentley, man. He be riding clean in the Bentley. Bentley. Why do you be flexing like that, bro? From here, Brother Nature pushed out a variety oh, of different content. He even began uploading vlogs to YouTube. However, his upload rate was not consistent and the views barely reflected the success he was receiving on other social media platforms. Mm. He focused a little bit more on posting his lifestyle in LA rather than animal-related content, which Yikes. may have made him seem less genuine. Brother Nature was randomly dragging this goat around LA and treating it more <laughs> like a pet. He failed to realize what made him so interesting in the first place, the lore behind all the 
deer and the wholesome Bro. sharing of food with them. Noticing that his views were dropping, Kelv decided to move back home to Pennsylvania in May of 2018, just mm. eight months after living in LA. Although he claims he moved because of the toxic environment in Los Angeles. After he returned home and started Fair uploading content with the deer in the area, he saw a career resurgence. Him being back with the deer was where he belonged. Fans were indulging in his life with Canela and the deer squad again. A lot of the deer even had their own Instagram pages. Yo. Brother Nature was back in his element and on top of the world. He grew to well Most over 1 million followers and deer garnered crazy, even bro. more fame than before. But yeah, some emotions. controversy was about to tarnish his reputation. Yikes. In October of 2018, a few months after Kelv's viral comeback, several controversial tweets resurfaced in which oh, he used anti-black and anti-Semitic language. He was 12 and go. 13 years old when he made these tweets, but they still had an effect on his public reputation. The story was covered by various major news outlets like the Huffington Post, Business Insider, he Daily like Mail, and dozens more. Kelv's squeaky clean image My was goodness. tainted and he lost several bookings and brand deals at the time, including a potential appearance on Dr. Phil. He yeah. posted a note to Twitter apologizing for his language and moved forward. On the internet, Some people though. immediately forgave him since he was so young, whereas others unfollowed him forever. From yeah. there, he was seemingly back and forth from LA and truly Crazy, traveling man. all over the country. Brother Nature did not fit the image of your typical wildlife personality. Typically, these personalities are unapologetic Go conservationists right who not spend all their time in the wild. They also typically attract political attention, often shining light on many of the various laws and regulations that allow humans to destroy animal species in the environment. Kelv mm. liked to travel the world, party, and live an upscale lifestyle. Like sure, he discussed were. his conservation you know? and charitable efforts, but Weird he also time. posted himself rocking designer clothes and flexing luxury cars. <laughs> he even dabbled Bro, in modeling. Also, his clothes- That scared me for a second. I thought you were about to get banned for life, but I forgot. It's like- I think it's 12 to be honest. I don't even know. Close friendship with Slater makes it seem like he was GG's, interested in indulging the here. lavish life of a rapper. <laughs> it was unclear what his intentions were. Was he trying to be a serious wildlife personality? Was he trying to make silly videos with animals for social media? Or was he trying to make money on the internet and this was the only thing that was working? Because it was now the end of 2019 and Brother Nature kind of just seemed like any other influencer so, so. who hangs out with celebrities and has this little side hobby of posting about animals. Like the dichotomy of him That's being a wildlife- solo album? about it. I don't think he has. He should, bro. If influencer, Fire. but then wearing brands like Prada and other designers who use real animal skin and potentially abuse animals for profit in their products Talk lost in respect to real conservationists around the world. Talk it was it. one night in Miami while he was living the high life where his whole career was about to change for Jeez. the worse. Jeez. In December of 2019, Kelvin visited Miami, Florida for a beach you cleanup did? event. He was partying heavily every night at various clubs on a week-long bender. On the night of the 6th, video surfaced on Twitter depicting him being violently hit and kicked in a sandwich shop as Yikes. bystanders looked on. People on social media initially assumed Kelv was attacked unprovoked, and an outpour of sympathy erupted. How could someone possibly beat up sweet old- The only Sway Lee album I'm seeing is a, a soundtrack that he did, and it wasn't even- he's not even on every song. And then he just listed separately on Shrem Life 3, because they- they did like Ray Shremmer and the Sway Lee, you know, it was called. But... So like they have something have to... uh nah. It looks like uh, they're pretty much on every song. At least they're credited for every song together, but it doesn't look like it. Brother Nature, no, no, but both of them should do solo albums. Emerged, they started to believe he was the one at fault. Kelvin went into La Sand Witchery, drunk, and saw there was a line and wanted to leave. But he claims an employee invited him to skip the line and sit down. But then when he skipped the line, the manager saw him and started yelling at him and demanding him to get out. Then Kelvin Yikes. refused and said there was a misunderstanding. Two patrons who were eating started filming the commotion from across the restaurant. Chico, don't nobody know you, Yikes. bro. Kelv went over, demanding them to delete the videos or else. They made it very clear they were willing to fight him and told him to back off. He pulls Yikes. out his phone and says this. Dead man, dead man. Kelv then leaves the restaurant before Jeez. getting into his car. And he has two options here. Leave the restaurant and accept the fact that it's not worth it to fight two grown men oh, who were filming back. you during an extremely mild misunderstanding. Or go back in there and fight them to prove only let people film you without their approval. Oh, the 
video man. then cuts to him getting beat up in the parking lot. <laughs> so evidently, he chose to fight, but he lost. Yikes. And now his ego was shattered. Yikes. So he decided to run back into the restaurant after his first beatdown and earn himself a second, much, much worse beatdown. Two for I don't even two? know how much of these clips I can show. I thought show, it was just though, one. I thought, I thought they so took it outside. So he decided to run back into the restaurant after his first beatdown and earn oh, himself no. a second much much worse beat down i don't oh, even know no. how much of these clips i can show because they're pretty brutal like he's Yikes. being kicked in the head and everything he woke up the next morning and tweeted i know there's a video of me getting jumped everyone in the pizza shop literally just watched with their phones out and did nothing nah, he, tried oh, well. to play victim. he initially received a ton of support and looked like the victim nah, but once just... the security video Bruh. footage was released and keemstar reported on the situation I nature everyone got the best realized of it was him who was in the wrong and instigated the entire fight put it set up he went to fight, and he even he ripped up my shirt. My shirt got ripped. If if you see, I had to. My shirt was all ripped. Okay. He grabbed me. He was just. He doesn't. He can't fight. I guess. I don't know what. That's his problem. That's. I don't know. I don't know whose problem that is. His problem. <laughs> well, I mean, when people it, are drunk, people <laughs> like to fight. I mean, that's like a that's like a common thing. And obviously, you know, he appeared pretty intoxicated from the videos but now judging off how viral his old GGs. tweet controversy was surely this story was going to be even bigger news but it something probably wasn't much a, larger i didn't hear about a, this until a couple months ago literally i didn't and even i didn't see that there was video footage i just thought that he like got jumped or something and that was it like i didn't know that fortunately bruh. sadder happened the next day rapper yes. juice world sadly passed away just one day after oh, this was the de oh so yeah that's why I, I didn't hear about that at all bro your brother nature's sandwich shop squabble that's so crazy media coverage shifted away from him and only talked about this tragedy i mean don't get me wrong people were away. still running to his comment section and calling him pathetic a punk playing the victim for starting a fight the internet universally agreed that he was being belligerent started the fight lost and then tried to act like he was innocent his posts often had a real. few people stealing the top comment by saying we didn't forget this tweet went viral a couple weeks after saying brother nature want to handle every animal except for the elephant in the room <laughs> Since Kelv was clearly in the wrong, a simple apology of just saying that he was drunk, acted like an ass, started the fight, Literally, and bro, got beat He could have taken what? accountability for his actions, and you know, maybe it would have went a little bit different, but he tried to play the victim, bro. I, honestly, I think God taught him a lesson here. I don't think he was looking out. I think he was, uh, you know... Maybe showing him that he really didn't matter. Because honestly, I think this all started from his ego. This guy kind of being like, hey, bro, you ain't know that, bro. You can get jumped and nobody will care. <laughs> like, literally. Like, that's embarrassing, bro. How you a whole influencer, you get jumped in public. There's video footage of it and no one cares. There isn't a single blog about it, bro. Keemstar is talking about it. Hey, bro. That's what tough, have likely bro. gained him a lot of respect. He went out sad, enough bro. to get beat up after outside. starting a fight. But admitting it and apologizing to the world is also difficult. Instead, he just did nothing. He ignored the controversy. He just kept posting consistently about Yikes. his charity work, spreading awareness about environmental issues, collaborations with celebrities, and of course, his lavish lifestyle. And to be honest, this kind of worked for him. Sure, he had I a bet. slight dip in engagement, likes and views, but once yeah, the pandemic nice. hit, the world had much bigger problems. We would later yeah. found out that the reason behind Kelv's downfall was because of his internal struggles with how he felt he handled the situation. Mm. In an interview on No Jumper in 2022, no jumper. which was Honestly, three it sucks that this is what journalism was for so long to the point now where we have to go back and use Keemstar and No Jumper as references for like, like serious things, or not even serious things, but like things that happen on your like, bro, really? It, it sucks, man. It sucks. But I mean, that's just what it was. I can't wait until... You know, time passes and the only real journalists left are our generation music, uh, Hyperpop Daily, Kids Take Over, and Kai, I guess, at this point. I don't know. I don't know. years after the incident, he says that he should have apologized, but no, he ignored it out of fear, go. and that fear slowly ate away at him. That interview came out though, because I haven't. No, never. No, that's what I should have did. Oh, but then, okay. like, some told me, like, like I think then fear came into play. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, just wait till you do something first. Wait till you do something first. Like, come out with that big project. You know what I'm saying? Because right. the goal always been like have like a TV show or some shit. You know, yeah. some mainstream stuff or just have a show. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I always wanted. So I'm like, maybe you should just get the show first. But then I think I, I became afraid to start making decisions because mm, I didn't just make that one. You know what I'm saying? And just read my news on like, paper. Person, See, I don't either. Group. I the think we is. just need better journalists, at least in the rap space and then like the hip hop culture space. Because I feel like because of, you know, 
a lot of a lot of things that go into like the clout era and you know all that it kind of just blended at that time so a lot of people like brother nature we're just ending up on no jumper even though it's kind of like music based sort of um but i just think we need better journalists you know which we have now but we didn't for a while it was literally just like no jumper for like a long time, bro. It's certainty of what the public thought about him slowly ruined his career. His posts slowed down, then the pandemic hit and slowed everyone's lives down. And then he just kind of turned into a regular uh, influencer, posting fit. I was rocking with Channel 5 for a little minute, bro, but I heard some stuff about bro and I, I ain't watched since, bro. I ain't gonna Pick smiling, lie, doing bro. random brand deals, occasionally posting a video so not with an so animal great once in a while. Can't then he really went on a year-long hiatus until March 28th, 2022, where he posted a photo with the caption, Retired. Retired His page is crazy. lost that spark and personality it used to have. He stopped smiling in pictures <laughs> and combined them with cryptic captions like, <laughs> Die a hero or live long enough to oh, see man, yourself. Oh, man, he think he bro. Then in February 2023, he said in a caption, Retirement, Retirement going, crazy. going crazy. It's not necessarily that the controversy ruined him because the public canceled him and decided to Yikes. stop supporting him. It's that he, as a man, felt like he handled the situation wrong and couldn't feel that closure for himself. Yikes, it then made him question dude. his own intentions and career path in the first place. Was all of this just for money? Nah, for Was real. it for he clout? He Did he dead, genuinely bro? have a mission to save and protect wildlife? Think he there are still people in his comment section today, <laughs> five years later, sorry, saying hilarious. they will never forget what he did. It is. But these types of trolls will always exist oh, and you sure. have to just ignore them. Yep. I don't think people actually care that he picked a fight and lost. It's really his brand as a whole that was too middle ground, unfocused, mm -hmm. and unclear. Like All it was easy place, to man. understand when he was just a kid showing love to his local wildlife. He could have transitioned to something like the Urban Rescue Ranch, who's run by a YouTuber named Ben. Ben runs his own okay. farm, rescues animals, gives them silly names yep. like his kangaroo named DaBaby or his prairie dog <laughs> named Big Ounce. Ben documents their daily lives oh, and his viewers develop bro, relationships. That's R.I.P. Big Ounce, bro. I didn't know that this was this channel, Don't bro. Farm, rescues animals. Because I had never heard of Big Ounce before he died, bro. And then I saw the clip and I was like, man, bro. Gives them that silly sucks, names man, but like I didn't his know it was kangaroo like a whole, named the baby or his. It was like a random guy on TikTok, bro. Because that's kind of just how TikTok works now. Prairie dog named Big Ounce. Ben documents their daily lives and his viewers develop relationships with the personalities of these animals. Kelv's content was always just handsome, nice guy meets wild. The whole animals. ad for He never took a serious <laughs> enough effort Imagine. to become an expert in the wildlife field because from there he could have collaborated with celebrities and Smart. educated them on the importance of wildlife conservation or something like that. His shtick just kind of ran out. He did not evolve, and the failure to address the sandwich shop incident ate away at him and ultimately accelerated his downfall. We hate to see it, bro, honestly, and I think that's another great example of, you know, people kind of throwing themselves into the entertainment industry, the content industry, you know, and uh, not really loving it, you know, for what it is and kind of just getting into it for a you know a little gimmick or for a little bag or something real quick you know it never works out bro it never works out we hate to see it bro we really do